Hello, 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 my loves, my darlings, my friends. It is time for another episode of the Teal Yarn Crafts podcast. I, of course, am Tony, the designer and instructor behind Teal Yarn Crafts. As always, you can find me on all of my social media under Teal Yarn Crafts. That includes Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, literally all the places. Now that spring has sprung, we're finally out of most of the icky weather, even though it like rained for four days straight just recently, but whatever. We're mostly out of the icky weather, which means that it's time for me to start traveling again. And I've been doing a lot of that lately. I spent last month at local yarn store day up in Michigan. Um, coming up, I have a trip to South Carolina. I'm going to be heading to Canada fairly soon, hopefully doing like a for fun trip later on in the summer. Literally all the traveling. I cannot wait. I absolutely love it. Give this video a thumbs up if you're planning on doing some traveling as well. Let me know where you're headed and what kind of projects you like to take with you when you travel. So we're going to kick things off and jump right into whips and finished projects. I usually start this off by showing you the progress that I've made on my temperature blanket. Um, I've been a naughty Tony. Like I said, I've been traveling a lot and I just, I honestly have not touched my temperature blanket since the last podcast episode. Let's have a moment of silence for my temperature blanket that's collecting dust on the bottom shelf of my bookshelf. Yep. She been down there and you know what? The weather has been so nice and I know, I already know that I'll be able to get into some amazing colors, but honestly, I've been in this season of just making. I've been making all the things. I've had a lot of commissioned projects. I have some personal things that I'm planning to put out that I'm actually going to talk about today. So sadly, as one of my for fun projects, my temperature blanket is just going to kind of stay parked where she's at. And while I am sadly behind, I am not stressed out about it. I made a huge commitment to myself and to all of you at the beginning of the year and promised that I would not let crochet stress me out this year. 2019 is the year of me being as relaxed <laughs> as possible, like taking time to slow down, not feeling stressed, make sure I'm managing my time properly so that I do have a little bit of space between projects to work on things. Now, since I'm in the season of just making all the things right now, I know where the finish line is on that season. And that day, there will be an entire pot of coffee just for me. Me and that temperature blanket gonna have a serious date. So let's talk about some things that I did finish <laughs> this month. Um, so the very first thing is actually my daydream shawl, which I finished a while back. I actually did a Tunisian crochet mastery class with a magazine that I was working on. And the project that I worked on in that class is now available for everyone. So that is this pretty girl right here. This is called the daydream shawl. I would put her on, but she's a little bit warm just based on the yarn that I use but here she is in all her fringy glory. So this is actually a Tunisian crochet project. This is made with Lion Brand Heartland. And why I have never worked with this yarn before, please do not ask me because I do not know. This is some of the smoothest, softest, nicest drape yarn I have ever worked with. I walked past it and like stuck my nose up at it at the store for literally years. This yarn reminds me a lot of like Karen Simply Soft, which I've actually used before, but since I'm like a certified yarn snob now, I just can't use yarns like that, which is of course not true. I use value yarns and stuff from Joann's and stores like that all the time. But for whatever reason, Heartland just never jumped out at me. But I knew for a project like this, I needed it to have amazing drape. I knew I was gonna cover it in fringe. So I needed like the most epic, gorgeous fringe, but I also needed a color range that still felt like me with those really warm, nice neutrals and those good earth tones. So the nice thing about Heartland is they have all of that. It's great drape it's really value priced like this uses three balls including all the fringe so I mean you're getting away with making an entire shawl for like what 20 bucks and it's got an amazing color range so I went for the color Grand Canyon which is like this warm neutral and it's got like these flecks of brown in it which is really really pretty and you can actually find this shawl as a free pattern on my blog it is Tunisian crochet but it's super simple and has a tutorial video you can also find this project as a kit with Lion Brand it was just released not too long ago so that is super exciting I have links to both of those down in the description. I'm also super excited about another project that I recently released. It's also free up on my blog. This one is called The Big Little Pet Bed. And the reason that I'm really excited about this is this is kind of a debut for my cats to be kind of immortalized on my blog. So The Big Little Pet Bed is made out of Bernat Maker Big, which I actually mentioned in the last podcast episode. It's that really big, pretty ball of like orangish colored yarn. It's a jumbo weight yarn, but it's really nice 
nice because it's got a cotton casing and then nylon filling. So it's lightweight, it's breathable, it's machine washable, uh, and it just works up super fast, which is awesome. So I'm going to include a link to that as well. Uh, but I was able to take some pictures of my cat Sheba in this bed. And I swear like her black fur next to this pretty orange pet bed. I'm like, oh my gosh, like just take it. You, you're just the cutest thing in the world. What do you want? Treats? More beds? Whatever. I'll give it to you. You can have it. She was so stinking cute. And like, honestly, I probably took like 40 pictures to get like the five or six that actually turned out nice because she's kind of still a kitten at heart. So she very rarely sits still with her eyes open. And I needed her to sit in the bed and like look like she was alert, not necessarily sleep the whole time. Cause as soon as she closes her eyes, she turns into a complete shadow. But I did get a few good pictures and you can find all of those as well as the free pattern up on my blog, tlycblog.com. And a big shout out to my friends at Yarnspirations for providing the yarn for that. Now, another project that went from a work in progress to a finished object just last night is this really pretty shawl. Now this is not even released yet. It's probably not even coming out till July. The only reason I'm sharing it is because I actually need help naming it. So let me give you some, well, let me give you a peek at it and then I'll give you some details about this project. So this, here she is. Ain't she pretty? Don't she look like springtime? I absolutely love this. So this yarn is actually hand dyed by my friend Ashley and her husband CJ behind Handmade Home Fibers. So Ashley, if you don't know already, is the knit and crochet goddess behind Sorella. She puts out some amazing patterns, some really cool tutorials. Her blog is like perfect and beautiful. She's one of the people that I really looked up to when I was starting um, my blog business. And I'm really excited that she and I are like super friends now. It's really cool. So she and I met originally during the weekend of Vogue Knitting Live in New York last year. And we kind of kept in touch since then. So when she and her husband opened up Handmade Home Fibers, I was like, oh my gosh, I need some of that yarn. So she was like, well, why don't we do kind of a collaborative project? I'll send you some yarn. You work up a project. We'll do some kits. It'll be super fun. And I was like, girl, reading my mind. Okay, let's do it. Let's make it happen. So she sent me this yarn a little while ago and I finally finished the project. Now, when I say I fought with a yarn, like I've never fought with a yarn the way I fought with this one. I knew that I had a specific idea in mind. And every time I went to execute that idea, this yarn was like, nope, not feeling it today. So I actually had to put it in the timeout pile for like I don't know, a few months. And then the final idea clicked and I was like, oh gosh, let's do it. I got to crank this out right now. So this is what we came out with. It's a really pretty beginner level pattern. All of this pretty color in the middle is just a, a gorgeous granny stripe. And then you've got some solid of this pretty goldish yellow color. And then at the bottom, you can kind of see it here. You've got this like two by two rib situation, which thank God I can math a little bit because that was not fun nor easy. <laughs> so I still need to block this project, obviously, to get it to its final shape. But now that it's completely done and just about ready to go to photographing, I have no idea what to call it. Um, I was thinking about basing it off of the name of the yarns. Like this one is called Ohio Blooms. And then this one is called Sunshine. Um, she named Ohio Blooms from the fact that I live in Ohio and we have beautiful flowers in the springtime. And then she named this one Sunshine based off the fact that my mom calls me Sunshine. That's kind of my nickname. So I was thinking about naming it after the yarn colors, but I just, I didn't love that. So I would love it if you'd go down into the comments and leave some name suggestions for this project. And if I pick your name, I'll give you a free copy of the pattern once it's released in July. So moving right along to hashtag yarn love, I will say I have been good this month. I have not bought any yarn, none not one ball of it. I've been, like I said, in the season of making and I'm making all the things. So I have enough yarn <laughs> for all the projects that I have coming up. Um, so I just haven't bought anything. And since I did my huge D stashes last month, it's like last thing I want to do is start filling all of this space with more yarn. So it's like, I'm just not going to do it. Now I did mention last episode that I got some of that new snuggle puff from Knit Picks. It did come in. Surprisingly, the day that I filmed my podcast episode. So this has been sitting here and I haven't shared it with anyone yet, but I'm going to hold it up real quick and show you the colors that I got. 
I mean, seriously, so stinking pretty. So Snufflepuff, kind of similar to Burnett Maker Big, has a casing and then it's got blown fiber inside of it. And what's nice about it, since this is a cotton nylon blend, is it makes it super lightweight. Like this is a 50 gram ball and it's a uh, Aaron worsted. It's like an Aaron heavy worsted and it's got 142 yards in a 50 gram ball. That is a lot for 50 grams at this yarn weight. And that's because this yarn is so light and so fluffy. I'm sure it blooms a little bit when you work on it and that's why they're considering it an Aaron heavy worsted because if I saw this in the store, I would call it straight up worsted. But it works and it makes sense. Now what I'm gonna do with these three colors, I'm not 100% sure. I just kind of wanted a sample of the yarns and clearly I haven't swatched with it just yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you posted. And that's it for hashtag yarn love. Like I said, I've been traveling, I've been not buying yarn, I've been in the season of making. So I've been kind of on this, I don't know, unexpected yarn fast for at least the last month. So thumbs up for yarn fasting. If you're saving your money for maybe what you're planning to buy when you go travel. I know I'm gonna be in South Carolina in a few weeks, um, just visiting some family and having some fun. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna be heading to some yarn stores for sure. All right, here we go. Time for my favorite things. And I was really looking forward to this because this past month has brought me some of the best media that I've been indulging in since we last talked. And I've got a laundry list of things that I have indulged in. So first up, Game of Thrones. Don't worry, I am not going to do any spoilers. I don't know if you're caught up. I don't even know when you're watching this, if you even watch Game of Thrones at all. But all I'm gonna say is I am a huge fan. So we got the HBO app just to be able to watch Game of Thrones. And I guarantee you, as soon as Game of Thrones is done, I am canceling it. Those like automatic payments and all of the different media services we have, that stuff adds up. So I am watching Game of Thrones right now with my husband. We just finished, I think it's the third episode third or fourth episode where they have the big battle with the White Walkers. <sighs> we ended up watching it a couple days late. So we go on YouTube and we go on all the blogs that we shouldn't be on and get people's reactions about like what they loved about it. Um, there's always a bunch of articles about like what you missed in this episode, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but one of the things that really stuck out to me from people who watched this episode is that they said that the battle was underwhelming. The fact that we've been leading up to over all these seasons, this huge battle, and they said it was underwhelming. And I was like, um, I don't know if we were watching the same show, but I was hyped for that battle the entire higher time. We were watching some of the kind of behind the episode information that was available on HBO and the director talks about how they were really intentional about breaking up the scenes and making sure that there were kind of these little battles within this big battle so it didn't feel like just an hour of fighting because that can get really really draining and really really boring. And I think they did an amazing job of doing that. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time until the very very last minute and I was like oh my god gosh i'm not super into like fantasy fiction like that kind of stuff i'm just not into it but for whatever reason game of thrones like that is my show and i'm so glad that it's back um so if you don't watch it already don't worry there were no spoilers but you need to go check it out next up very same day my husband and i actually went and saw avengers endgame so we're huge marvel fans in this house we have seen every single one of the movies leading up to it. Like we went and saw Captain Marvel a few weeks ago and that came out. We got our end game tickets super duper, like super crazy early. My husband's actually seen it twice at this point. I didn't see it day of because I was out of town, but I was like, like the day that I got back, we had tickets for 4 p.m. that day. So when it comes to movies like that, I am a huge fan of origin stories and the wrap up. So I was really excited about Endgame because that was supposed to be like the last installment of the Avengers franchise. And if you've been watching the Marvel movies like I have over the last umpteen years, you are just as invested in all these characters and what happens next as I am. And again, no spoilers. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but just know that this movie was amazing. Similar to Game of Thrones, there was this epic fight scene at the end. And since we're so enmeshed with these characters and all that they've gone through and everything they've experienced, all the emotion and losing characters and finding new people and just like your alliances change so much throughout the course of this movie. But in the end, you really get to that point where you're like, they wrapped it up well. Like all of the people that did the writing, the actors, like all the crew, all the sets, the makeup, the costume design, like all of it puts you in that place to really experience what was happening with all those characters. So big thumbs up to everybody who worked on Avengers Endgame. Really, really great movie. I will say though, 
my favorite Avengers movie is still gonna be the very first Iron Man. Give me a good origin story and I am a happy girl. Like I said, I've been watching a lot of media lately. In the season of making, I like to just have background noise and sometimes like a really good show on. So since we got the HBO app, I've been kind of working through, well really binging through some of my series that I've been wanting to watch on there. One of which is True Detective, which is like this film noir feeling cop procedural. Like if you're a fan of maybe some of the darker episodes of Law & Order SVU, then this is the show for you. So the very first season has, I think it's Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey, and they're in Louisiana searching for like a murderer. And it's got, it's all these symbols and, and, and backwoods situations happening. I'm not going to give anything away, but just know that's the first season. There's only eight episodes. And in those eight episodes, you go on a roller co stir it is insane and i absolutely love it in the very last episode i'm like <gasps> the whole time i'm like terrified and you know that if a show that you're only half watching because you're crocheting the whole time can really make you feel like that you know it's a good show so i just actually finished the third season i watched them all the way through last season has mahershala ali in it and he wasn't one of my favorite actors before, but he is now. He is so dynamic. And what I love about that last season is that they take you through kind of three different points in time. It takes you from when he's really young um, to about 10 years later. And then when he's like a 70 year old man um, and is actually battling with Alzheimer's, but he's a detective who dealt with this um, case that spans this entire length of time. As you watch this story unfold, not only are you indebted to this case and trying to find out what happened, but you also really get in deep with Mahershala's character and seeing how he has changed and evolved um, over all of these years. So if you're watching Game of Thrones right now, in the in-between time, you might as well go watch True Detective. Now we're going to wrap it up with... The one piece of media, of course, that I was waiting to watch, which is Homecoming, which is the kind of the documentary of Beyonce's performance at Coachella. Not everybody's a Beyonce fan. I totally get it. But please understand that one, I am a Beyonce fan. And two, I'm a huge Beyonce fan. <laughs> I've been to her concert twice. Uh, one for my 30th birthday. I was gifted tickets for my husband. And the second time that I went, I was planning to be up in the nosebleeds with my friend. Um, but I actually made friends with a girl at a yarn store and she got me floor seats. So buy me a glass of wine and I'll tell you that story. As a huge Beyonce fan, I follow a lot of Beyonce fan accounts on Instagram. And there have been clips of this documentary floating out, floating around for like months. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to be a whole documentary. I, I don't know how these fan accounts get the media that they do, but I just like take it all in. So when I found out that Homecoming was actually going to be a documentary on Netflix, a streaming service that I already have, which I appreciate, I was like, yep, got to watch it, got to happen. Well, of course, when you're in a relationship with someone, there's always certain things that they don't want you to watch without them. So I didn't get to watch Homecoming when it first, first came out, um, but I did finally get to watch it when I was finishing up my shawl just last night. And I'm really, really excited about the documentary, not only to listen to all the music, um, look at all the outfits. She had five outfit changes in two hours. Like, come on. But you also got a lot of the behind the scenes action of what it took to put on a production like this. So she really highlights kind of the battle of the bands experience that you get at an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. Like these are schools that are unlike any other because they really embrace black culture and black traditions. Um, so when you think about a band performance, performance at an HBCU compared to like a regular school, it's like night and day. Truly it is. So I really loved how intentional she was and her entire production team was to make sure you felt that experience from the outfits, from all the different dances, from the incorporation of all the different instruments and all the players that were on stage and everyone behind stage were really, really involved in making sure you felt that. Next up, I wanted to share some really, really, really exciting news. Um, so you probably know by now, but there's a gal named Sarah Jane, and she runs a crochet channel, crochet blog, crochet situation called Bella Coco. If you are familiar with me, I guarantee you know Sarah Jane because she's actually one of the people who helped me expand my crochet skills. When I was first, first learning, I spent a ton of time on YouTube um, figuring out new stitches, new techniques, um, a lot of different ways to design. And Sarah Jane is a really great resource for that. Her YouTube channel is bursting with information and I just soaked it all in. So considering that she was one of the people that really influenced and helped my early crochet career, you have to know how excited I was to get an email from her team saying, hey, 
Sarah Jane's starting this new thing and we'd love for you to be involved in it. And I was like, okay, I guess, what do you need? Like I was so, I was so kind of, it was this really surreal moment. You know, you have these moments in your maker career where it's like, wow, I kind of, I feel like I made it today. You know, I feel like all of this work was worth it. And that people that you really look up to are noticing your work and want to be involved with you, which is really exciting. So ultimately what they wanted me to do is actually design a piece for their very first subscription box, which is called the Crochet Society. So every month they're putting together this really exciting luxury crochet box. Um, and it involves yarn that maybe you've never seen before, yarn weights you haven't worked before, colors maybe you haven't seen, I know at least for the project that I designed, I worked with a yarn that I'd never heard of before, had never seen before, a company that I wasn't familiar with. So that was a really fun experience to try something new. In addition to the really fun and unique yarn that you get, you also get what she's calling a bespoke crochet hook. When it comes to crochet hooks, as somebody who collects crochet hooks basically as my second hobby, I don't know what she could be giving us that I don't have already. So I'm really, really excited about that. In addition, you'll get a design booklet. So from what I've come to understand, you actually get multiple projects that you can make with the yarn that's come in that box. And that feels kind of similar to some other um, yarn boxes like Knit Crate, for example. And then lastly, you get some bonus goodies. And she doesn't tell you what those are. Those are a complete secret. Aside from the yarn and the project that I've designed, I haven't seen the hook. I don't know what the bonus goodies are. I don't know what that design booklet looks looks like. Um, so I will actually get the first box. It's not going to ship until later on this month, but I'll be sure to open that here on the channel. So if you're interested in the Crochet Society box, here are some details about it. Regardless of where you live, you'll have access to this box. One thing that Sarah Jane was really intentional about is making sure that this box could ship worldwide. So if you go to their website, which I'll include a link in the description, um, you can actually see how much it costs to the place that you live. If you're here in the U.S., the box costs 32 50 and that includes shipping and all of the goodies that come inside the box. Order by May 15th and the box will ship around the 28th of May. That's when the first boxes are going out. So they did a nice long lead up to those first boxes to make sure everyone who's interested has an opportunity to get them. I for one am so here for this project. I think it is high time that there were way more crochet centric subscription boxes and I honestly can't think of anyone better than Sarah Jane to put out a product like this. I'll be getting mine at the end of the month fingers crossed it'll come soon and I'll be unboxing it here on my channel. Now it's time for open floor where I get to just run my mouth about whatever feels good and today we're going to be chatting about how to get more comfortable in front of the camera. So if you're a handmade business owner you already know how beneficial adding video to your business can be and that can be video anywhere like the podcast that I'm doing right now or maybe that's tutorial videos. Maybe it's putting up more stories on Instagram or going live on Facebook. Regardless of what that looks like to you you really have to have the connection with the camera to feel like a professional, to look like you know what you're talking about, and really to connect with the audience that you want to be watching you. Currently in my Facebook group, I am doing a series of live streams that talk all about how to incorporate video into your handmade business. We just completed our very first video in this series. I shared 10 tips that you can use to make sure that when you start rolling, you have no problems. I'm going to share five of those tips with you right now. So my first tip was to make sure that you only film when you feel good okay and that might seem obvious but it's not really for everyone so if you're having a rough day or maybe you're feeling a little under the weather maybe you just got some bad news that might not be a good filming day but if you're not feeling good that is going to translate on camera and you just do not want that because it's really going to turn people off so make sure you're feeling good that day and just feeling 100% your best because you want to be your best self plus 10. My second tip was to take the time to style yourself and to style your space. So if you look at what I've got on screen right now, I've got a blouse on. I feel like a, I feel very much like an adult because I had to purchase several blouses for an event that I did recently. So I'm wearing one of my blouses. I hope you like it. So I've got my blouse on. My hair is done. I've got my face on. I cleaned up my space. I made sure that everything that you might see behind me is presentable and doesn't look like crap. So considering that myself and my space are in order, it's not going to be distracting to me while I talk to the camera. And it's not going to be distracting to you as my audience member because you can focus on me as opposed to any 
chaos that might be happening behind me. My next tip was to enunciate and slow down. Now I am still a victim of this most of the time when I record. I naturally talk fast and I think since I started doing video I actually talk faster and if you've ever been around me when I'm watching YouTube videos I actually watch every single one of my videos on two times speed because mama ain't got time but when it's actually time to record videos take the time to enunciate your words because that makes you sound like more of a professional and like you know what you're talking about and take time to slow down and really with your nonverbals, connect with your audience so every now and then when i'm recording my podcast if i get really excited about something and i start talking really really fast i try to be co conscious of that and just kind of slow down relax a little bit just to make sure everybody can follow along the story with me the next tip that i offered was one that should be really really obvious but isn't for everyone when you're recording video regardless of if it's a story a live or even something that you're going to record and edit make sure you look at the camera and not at the screen so if you're working with like a DSLR camera or something like that you might have one of those flip out screens if you're recording straight from your computer you might have a camera right above the actual screen or if you're recording from your phone you might actually be looking at your screen which means you're not looking at the camera and that means you're not looking at your audience so let's do a practice really quick right now I am looking straight into the eye of my camera which makes it look like I'm looking straight into the eyes of your soul like we are connected right now let's try this now I'm looking at myself I actually look really good today you guys like the red hair it's new oh my gosh is that lint oh of course we'll just leave it there you live here now uh, so I'm looking at the screen I'm looking at myself I'm I'm actually really happy with what's happening right here but that does zero favors for the kind of connection that I'm trying to have with you as an audience member. So as you're getting more comfortable making video for your business be sure that you're looking at the actual eye of the camera and not at yourself on the screen. It's really easy to do it's super easy to overlook but it's one little tweak that you can make in doing video that will make a huge difference. And then the fifth tip that I'll share is to be prepared. Now it doesn't necessarily make sense to have a full-on script when you're doing any kind of video recording because then you're just going to sound like a robot and if that's the case you can just do a blog post and call it good but it is important to have some talking points like for this podcast episode I have a page of talking points there's no way I'm coming up with all of this off the top of my head but having those talking points really keeps me on track because there are certain things that I try to make sure I talk about in my podcast episodes so that's just five of the tips that I shared when I talked about getting more comfortable on camera you can see all of those in my Facebook group TOYC makers I actually put a direct link to that video so if you're already in the Facebook group you can go right to that video if you're not a member of the Facebook group already you can always uh, request to join and we'll get you in there lickety split so we're gonna start wrapping things up and of course we've got a pattern spotlight today's pattern spotlight is the summertime tee which is actually one of the first garment designs that I ever made this one is a tunic style t-shirt that uses worsted weight yarn this pattern is actually free on my blog tlycblog.com I'll put a link below and you can also get this as a kit on the lion brand website and I'll have a link for that one as well lastly I have my final word which is a little piece of encouragement to carry you through your day on a lighter note and today's final word is it's okay to say no you wouldn't think so being a handmade business owner you think you have to say yes to every opportunity yes to every event yes to every pattern idea but actually saying no to a project that you're not in love with gives you the space and time to say yes to that dream project so i want to thank you so much for hanging out with me on this episode of the tl yarncrafts podcast as always you can find me on all of my social media tl yarncrafts on pinterest instagram facebook and youtube you can also join my email list to be the first to know about all things tl yarncrafts and visit tlyarncrafts.com for all of my TLYC swag and patterns. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Love you, mom. Love you, dad. See you next time.